Okay, today I'm going to show you how to simply create a number pad uh, in a GUI application for Python. Now, I personally like to write things by hand using GTK. Uh, and if you've been watching my tutorials, I mentioned that I'm going to be working on a Python script, which I've actually finished, but I need to go over how to build it with you guys, which is actually going to be a number pad that allows you to type in numbers to access caller-id-faker.com, which is a website that will fake your caller ID. And I want to create a number pad so I can easily use this application on my Nokia N900 cell phone. Well, I thought, you know, I like GTK, I normally use GTK, but it doesn't hurt to play with other stuff, and I have, like, QT Designer in the past which is uh, an application for developing um, GUI applications rapid for rapid development uh, of Qt uh, applications. And once again, like I said, I prefer writing things out by hand, and today I'm going to show you kind of why it's preferred. Now, I like GTK just because I know it better, but Qt, if you were right by hand, you can be more efficient. But I'm going to show you how inefficient in some aspects uh, using a quick uh, rapid designer like this can be. So I'm gonna, I started up QD Designer 4 is uh, what I'm running. Make sure you're running 4 if you're gonna be following this tutorial. Uh, QT4 Designer actually. And then uh, I'm gonna create a main window, so create. So here we are, we have a window. I'm going to scale it down like this, okay. So what I wanna create is an application with a entry box up here and then a number pad like you would have on your phone. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type here uh, text. I'm trying to line edit. It's in GTK, it's an entry box. In Qt, it's called a line edit. So there's our little line edit there. Next, I'm going to add in some buttons. So there's a button, and I'm going to control C, control V, just copy and paste that. And I'm going to quickly just create a little keypad here. Don't worry about lining it up perfectly at this point, because what we're going to do is create these 12 buttons, one through nine, zero pound and asterisk. Pound is a little number symbol. I know it's called different things in different countries. So at this point, I'm gonna shift select and grab all those and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little grid uh, layout here. Boom, it puts them in a grid. And then I'm going to just select our window here and choose this vertical layout. Boom. And also, you notice it doesn't, by default, uh, size our buttons to fit. So what we would want to do is select it here and um, type in here. horizontal, vertical fixed. We want to change vertical fixed. Sorry, I couldn't remember. I don't use this application as much. Like I say, I normally write stuff by hand. And we're going to change this to Mac minimum expand. And there it fits the size. So we can do this for each one, really. If we had done it before, uh, we should have, we could have, if we did it before, we copied and pasted the button. It would have been better. I wonder what happens if I select multiple. There you go. We can just uh, control and click on each one of these is a faster way to do it. So there we go. So we have our number pad little thing up here. Uh, really, I also don't need this um, by default when you create a main window in the in here. It's going to add our status bar and menu bar. We're not going to be using that, so I'm just going to remove that and remove our status bar. Great, we have this little GUI thing. It doesn't really have any functionality at this point other than just being a GUI interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, and I'm going to Save As, and I'm just going to save it in my temp folder, and I'm going to just call it Pad UI. Save. Okay, now I'm going to open up a terminal, and I will go to my temp folder, and if I list out Pad.UI, you can see that it exists. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a tool called... Um, PYUIC4. It's uh, I've gone over this in tutorials in the past. It's in a separate package. The package is called well, we'll look that up in a minute because I can't remember off the top of my head. We're going to say dash x because we're going to create an executable uh, Python script. It gives the, the headers and everything. 
um, we're going to say we're going to use pad UI and then we're going to say dash O for output we'll just say pad dot PY boom it took that UI interface and created a Python script for us if I vim into pad dot PY you can see the code here and you can see it is very very large currently um, it is 156 characters. Yeah, there's a little bit of a header at the beginning here. So let's, uh, just to be fair, we'll remove that little warning. Um, and I'm going to add our shebang line here. So USR, bin, env for environment, Python. But just telling our operating system that this is a Python script. This is needed, otherwise you'd have to run Python in the name of the script. Just makes things easier and more compatible. We're going to uh, save this file, and if I make it executable, doing change mod plus x and the name of our script, now I can just forward slash, dot slash I mean, the name of our script, and here we go, we have a little GUI interface here with our pads. Obviously we didn't take the time to relabel each one of these, which we would do. I'm just trying to show you here that once again, if we can go into Vim the text editor and look at the code here, 149 lines just to create that GUI interface, it works. It's a very fast way of doing things, um, but it's not really, as a programmer, uh, you should work for efficiency. Now there's different types of efficiency. If you're looking at efficiency as rapid development, this is great. But uh, 150 lines basically to create just the GUI without any functionality is ridiculous. Uh, when I show you in the next tutorial, we're going to write stuff out by hand. I'm going to use GTK, but you could do the same thing with QT if you wrote it out by hand. And we're going we're gonna to create the entire application with the full functionality and it's gonna be probably less than a third that size. And it's just because using a what you see is what you get type interface for rapid development like this is a very fast way of doing things. It isn't the most efficient as far as, as you know um, script size. And I know that nowadays computers are so fast, it doesn't, it allows programmers to be sloppy and do things like this. But in reality, if you can shorten up your code and give it the same or even better functionality, that's what you should do. So, I mean, if you're just a hobbyist, just playing around and you want to use a, what you see is what you get uh, type um, GUI interface designer like this, that's great. Also, writing stuff out by hand is going to give you a lot more control over manipulating if you want to change the way it looks um, as the user's using your face. You have a lot more control when you write it out by hand. So. That is how you create the basic GUI interface using QT Designer, QT4 Designer. Um, but once again, I'm going to show you that it's a lot more efficient to write it out by hand. Um, and how basically using interfaces like this is nice and quick, but you lose a little bit of control and it makes your code very sloppy. So once again, it's personal preference and depending on what type of programmer you are. Once again, if you're just creating an application for yourself, it's going to do something that this is great, but if you're creating something that you're going to distribute, you're really going to want to write it out, in my opinion, by hand to clean up your code, make sure you have clean code and make it more efficient. Once again, computers nowadays are so fast that it allows programmers to be sloppy, but it, especially if you might be running this application on something like a phone, this will still probably run fine, but once again, you just want to, in my opinion, you want to have the shorter the code, the better in most cases. Um, real quick here, before I forget, let's do aptitude search, um, and I'm going to search the description of the file, and we're going to look for uh, PY UIC4. Hit enter, and it should tell us. right there. Uh, the application, the PYUIC4, I've gone over this in um, tutorials in the past, is a separate package from the Qt designer that allows you to turn those UI files, those user interface files, into Python scripts. And the package it comes in is PYQT4-DEV-Tools. Once you install that, you'll have that application and be able to 
run this command to easily convert what you create in Qt for designer into uh, an actual Python script. And there is another package uh, similarly for Qt3 uh, designer, um, but I use Qt3 when there's the newer Qt4. People may have reasons. If that's what you use, I'm not insulting you. And our next tutorial, hopefully, once I post it, there'll be an annotation here, but if you're a subscriber, it should be in your inbox when I upload it. On writing this by hand, it may take a little bit longer to create, but it will be a much, much, I can promise that this user interface here, we can create in under, I'm gonna say under 50 lines. I wanna say it was 30 something lines when I, when I did it the other day. Def definitely under 40 or 50 lines, so I mean, a fraction of the size and we can add in full functionality to it and still have it be less than excuse me less than the the script generated by QT4 designer so thank you for watching please visit filmsbychris.com that's Chris with a K there will be links in the description um, as well as I'll post um, both this UI file and the PY file uh, in the post, uh, the first link in the description for most of my videos is a post on my WordPress site, and usually I'll have sample code there. So you can go there, download a compressed file that has both these files in it, and play with it, or you know, follow along and do it yourself. But I wanted to show you how to do it here, and I also wanted to show you how, in some ways, it's very inefficient. That's kind of the point of this tutorial. So thank you very much once again, and I hope that you have a great day.